New study shows that taurine may be the key to longevity. They actually did a study on multiple animal models and found that taurine concentration was a predictor of aging. So they increased taurine uh, concentrations in animals like rats and some worms and some other animal models. And they found that the lifespans increased by 10 to 12%. What is taurine? It's an amino acid. It's known as a conditionally essential amino acid, meaning your body can produce taurine, but under times of stress or illness, you probably need to consume more of it. So what's the key takeaway here? Should you just supplement with taurine? No. You know where you get a lot of taurine? Protein. Really what the study is showing is that you probably need more protein as you age, and this totally uh, corresponds with uh, studies on humans. As humans get older, they do better with higher protein diets. So what's the, again, the takeaway? You want to live longer, eat more protein. Is this a new study? <clears throat> new study for touring. Yeah. So this will be interesting. I, when our, has our friend Lane got a hold of it yet? No. So it'll be interesting to see how Lane talks about it, because yeah. this is like one of those ones that you could totally try and shit on it because of it, one, being done in animal, and then two, your point about protein. I hope that he highlights that's probably the key fact here. That's what it is. Like They'll do studies mm -hmm. on like branched amino acids, arginine, proline, whatever. All these amino acids show all these benefits. But if you get a good amount of protein, what would be considered, um, you know, optimal, right, for muscle building, you're getting a lot of all the amino acids. Right. So that's what they're missing. So really with these animal models, it's like if these animals ate more protein, they'd get the taurine. And again, that uh, corresponds with the data on humans where they find that as humans get older, having higher protein intake, especially when you combine it with strength training. I want to add that, right? You combine it with strength training, it's like... It's as close as you can get to the fountain of youth. Mm -hmm. So what's the motivation to study something like taurine by itself like that? Because they identify what amino acids, what, they know what different amino acids mm -hmm. do in the body. Yeah, And yeah, okay. amino acid taurine is important for energy production. It's in energy drinks, you know, you know like Red Bull. Oh, yeah. yeah Red Bull's got taurine in it. It's, uh, it's an interesting amino acid. It's not technically an essential amino acid because your body can make it. But when you're stressed or sick, uh, you could deplete yourself very quickly. So they call it a, condition, a conditionally- essential amino acid. But, you know, I mean, <clears throat> how many grams of, of taurine is in, you know, 30 grams of whey protein, right? Like plenty, like mm -hmm. more than you'll get from just supplementing with taurine. Now, so. was that the class, like the energy drink class? Because that wasn't a thing for us growing up, but then it became a thing. And it was like, they have like B vitamins, taurine, yeah. and like they, they just smashed all these vitamins in there and like called it an energy drink. Well, I think that the classic move <laughs> there was just that, uh, Caffeine is, <laughs> is the, the energy is the main well, energy was the driver, driver but and they, then the selling point is that oh it has creatine oh it has vitamin B yeah. oh it has K D it has all these other yeah. things that they throw in it to make it more superior than the other caffeine drink yeah B yeah. vitamin really at the end of the day yes. everybody who compares all of these energy drinks which is better and stuff like that it's really the the dose of caffeine is really what's making the biggest difference as far as what you feel yeah and yeah, then yeah, all the other stuff is just a bunch of filler bullshit to make you. Yeah. Sound or sound like yours is better or tastes better. Yeah, that make your tea, uh, pee brighter. Yeah. yeah. Total, well, so B vitamins have, have been touted for a long time for energy, but really it's if you're deficient, then it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Some people have a, a, a <clears throat> tough time absorbing like B12 because they have gut issues. So you give somebody, or I think there's some genetic mutations uh, in, in some people too, or some genetic variances, I should say, in people where they just don't absorb a lot of B. You give them a shot of vitamin B12. It's life changing. I had a client like that. I had a client like that who had chronic fatigue, couldn't figure out what happened, worked with a functional medicine practitioner, was supplementing with B12. It just wasn't absorbing. So the functional medicine practitioner was like, do a shot of B12 once every, I don't remember what it was, three, four days. And she's like, bro, she's like, I took, I did the shot. And she's like, hours later, I felt like a, a, a new person. This is why we talk about, you know, when it comes to the supplement game, nothing is more impactful than supplementing something that you're deficient in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, I, I remember when we first got the <sighs> mellow product from Ned and I, the magnesium, it was like, cause you needed it. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. And that's why too, it's like, so why, why some people are like, Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't know anything. Well, maybe you're not deficient in yeah, that idiot. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then somebody who does thinks it's amazing. It's like, well, yeah, cause you're now you're getting what you need. You know? Yeah. I th mm -hmm. th that's why I think in the future and, and you're starting to see this a little bit, um, uh, but I think you're going to see more in the future that like whey protein, okay, which is used to be just for bodybuilders. Now it's making its way into somewhat health and wellness. Um, I think that's going to be a longevity supplement. 
Because yeah. um, you see this, you see that as people get older, their, their requirements for protein go up and, and, and with strength training, it, uh, it really does make a significant improvement um, on quality of life and on, on aging. And again, protein is chains of way, uh, uh, you know, a gram of whey protein is all the amino acids. Mm -hmm. It's a complete protein and it has all the amino acids and it has high amounts of all of the amino acids you hear about, the branched amino acids, glutamine, which is the most abundant amino acid in, in muscle, taurine, which we just talked about. So whey protein, like give yourself, uh, you know, make sure you hit your protein targets with food. And if you can't, yeah. you know, like get yourself a good whey protein. Uh, Legion's got a great one. We work Cover with Cover your bases with that. Yeah. And remind me again, because uh, <clears throat> Legion specifically, because I, I believe they it's stevia that they sweeten it with, right? Instead of like a- um, They don't use the artificial sweetener. It's not an artificial sweetener, but also too, don't they have like enzymes and the digestible enzymes? Um, well, they use, uh, I know the one thing about um, Legion that I like is it's whey protein isolate. Mm. So it's like just protein. Yeah. It's very easily digestible. It's, it's so much you, better like for yeah. that reason. Unless, you know what, you're, unless you can't eat dairy. Right? Do you know what else Mike carries that I didn't know that he carried is the, which I love for, cause I mix a lot of like whey, like in food, like if I'm making pancakes or waffles or back before we had creatures of habit, I'd mix it in my oatmeal and like finding a good whey protein, like the flavor that mixes. He has the flavorless whey. And not a lot of not a lot of companies carry also a he has all kinds of crazy flavors that all are amazing. But then yeah. he has a flavor. I bet nobody buys that though. You, you, okay, well I'll, let me sell it to you. So if you mix whey protein in pancakes, waffles, oatmeal, oh, you go. in food to cook with, yes, it is the best yeah. to get flavorless whey protein. If you're gonna drink it, yeah. If you're if you're a person who shakes it up with water or almond milk or whatever your thing is, and then drinks it, well mm -hmm. then yeah, get your fruity pebble flavor, caramel salted crunch, whatever. But yeah, I they have I, salty caramel. They do. It's, it's bomb. It is good. <laughs> but I just had that. I thought but, you just made but, that up. No, no, no salt, it's like, totally a real flavor. He's got the fruity caramels. pebble one too. That's delicious. a real flavor. Yeah, whey protein? yes, he's got a real flavor. It's oh, a, or it's like yeah, fruity pebble or fruity cereal. Fruity cereal is the 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 name of his that, and it's bomb. But I don't. I tend to mix whey protein in like food like i mean we bake we make homemade cookies that way we do pancakes that way we do waffles yeah, that smart. way I'll like i said we used to do that. the oatmeal that way yeah so if you want to do that the best is to do like a flavorless so it doesn't change the flavor of the food that you're already currently eating what do you see there doug they have all types of uh, uh, interesting flavors cocoa cereal apple pie banana bread dutch chocolate birthday cake Chocolate peanut butter, cookies and cream, French vanilla, fruity, fruity cereal, cereal oh honey God. cereal, yeah. mocha cappuccino, pumpkin pie, salted caramel. Fruity cereal tastes like after you've had fruity pebbles. And the, the milk? The milk at the bottom. What? Yes, is what it tastes I like. I remember that as a kid. Yeah, I know. That's why it was like a, such a, like part. a, yeah, when I had it, I was like, oh my God, that brought me back to do you know what I Do you know what I did once? What, I went to uh, Italy when I was 12 and my cousin, he, I mean, I'd never tried this before. So he would do cocoa what was it? Cocoa Krispies or whatever the chocolate. Yeah. Cereal. Yeah. Oh, Cocoa Krispie yeah. milk. Oh, yeah. he's the best. Oh no, no. He used chocolate milk with <laughs> Cocoa Krispies. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's rich. That's overkill. Yeah. He has diabetes yeah. now, but wow. <laughs> that was wow. Back then. Oh, that's yeah. like when I used to make nachos out of that's nacho funny. Doritos. <laughs> it's, it's he has like diabetes overkill. now. Yeah. Yeah. But no, but he used to do that. Didn't and work out so well for him. He doesn't have diabetes. That was a terrible joke. But he used to, that's why I felt bad for laughing. I know, I know. That's terrible. It's dark. Yeah. But no, he used to do that. He'd buy chocolate milk and he'd mix it in there. I remember he'd be like, my, as a 12-year-old, yeah. oh, you could combine everything. You know what else he used to do? Then I went later on when I was 19. So at this point, he's in college. And he goes, you ever have super espresso? I'm like, what? Because, you know, college, you got to stay up and whatever. Mm -hmm. So they would make espresso. Then they would use the espresso as the water for another espresso. <laughs> so you'd have like- Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I want, like super oh, caffeine. Bro. Oh, that's got to be like chewing on like the coffee bean. Yeah, that's I don't what it's going to taste yeah. like. Oh. Yeah. Look at Doug. <laughs> Doug likes, he's such an espresso aficionado. I just, yeah. I just killed him right now. Yeah. Just totally How, do you, are you consistently using your, you know, million dollar espresso machine you have? Not a million. Come I, on. Yeah, it's, it's, I use it every day. You do? Yeah. Every, every day you use mm -hmm. it. You push a button wow. and it picks the organic beans in Colombia for you. Brings it so, <laughs> yeah, and roast so them. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. You know what I mean? It's all chrome and everything. I have a $90 espresso 
espresso machine at home. Do you know that? Yeah, I, I bought know. it. On, I bought it on Amazon. That's not really a, an espresso machine. It's a. Hey, listen, I'm Italian. I can say yeah. what I want about it. Okay. You know, you know, Doug's is so good. Is that, remember? I don't know if I brought it up on the show or not. When and this was like, I think it was before playoffs when Jimmy Butler, which by the way made it all the way to the, the Heat, made it all the way to the end, right? And he was flying on his private jet with his espresso machine, and it was the same espresso the machine, the same one that, 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 Doug has. that Doug has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. I think I showed you that. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you saw yeah, that. Yeah, like, the exact same one as I have. It's yeah. all chrome looking, right? Yeah. It's chrome. It's black and chrome. This one. Oh yeah. 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 Well, I mean, like, you, you know, he, you know, you're that with him. yes. He's flying on his. He's, he gets off the plane. I don't remember what city they're in. Playing another team, obviously. And he is carrying an espresso machine. No, off. I'm not that serious. And dude. I remember I was looking at it and explaining how ridiculous it was. And Doug's yeah. like, "That's the same espresso like, machine." But I have. also, I understand. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, "Now I know that thing must be that good." If you guys, you know, what it reminds me of his uh, space balls. Remember when, like, yes. he, had, he had to Mr. grab Coffee? this. Well, no, he had to he had to grab the uh, suitcase, and in, in her suitcase was this huge hair dryer. Oh yeah, <laughs> industrial <laughs> strength. Like, he read this thing. What a great movie! Come on, was. what a great movie, Doug. Uh, do you? have a particular water that you use for espresso? I mean, I have reverse osmosis water I okay. use. You know, so, that makes a big difference too. Okay. So my yes. dad yeah. is very specific. Oh, okay. He uses crystal geyser water and he preaches to the whole family about yeah. this. It makes, no. a it makes a huge difference. Oh, my dad, no, you have to use yeah, yeah. crystal geyser. Did you make a crystal geyser? You know, for the longest time, I was, try make, it. I was making coffee uh, from tap water and I could not figure out why my coffee was not tasting because I had moved to a new house. boss. <laughs> it was all fluoride. And, and the, and the <laughs> you know, it was just tap water. Well, my thought was, well, you're boiling it. So I'm like, anything that's bad, you're going to boil You're going to boil off. Yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking it's not bad, but it changed the way the, the it's coffee would taste. Yeah. 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 It's the minerals. You know, the thing is, though, with the espresso machine, you can't have a high mineral water. Otherwise, it will get a lot of calcification on the interior. On the machine. In the machi machine. So there's actually test strips you need to use to make sure your water's not too hard. Um, and so I do that. However, having minerals may actually improve the, the taste of the coffee. And, and here's a trick I've heard and I've tried is if you get like crappy coffee, you take a pinch of salt and you drop it into the coffee and it will improve the taste of your coffee. What? Yeah. Mm, a little bit wow. of salt. I'm I just learned something that, crazy. Yeah, That's cool. try it out. Try the crystal geyser. It makes geyser. sense. I mean, I'll try it. Uh, my my dad's all about it. I, yeah. I mean, like, literally won't stop talking about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have. That's what we, so when we found it was a tap water, we yeah. used, because we always have bottled crystal geyser water at our house. So that's house. what you use. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And it made a huge difference. As soon as we switched over to that, I was like, oh my God, this whole time I thought there was something wrong with our coffee because it was like mm. the same coffee I was getting forever. And I couldn't figure out why it was bad. And then wow. Katrina started pouring the, the crystal geyser water in there. And it was like, oh, shit. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Today's program giveaway is Maps Strong. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, we're also running a sale right now on some workout programs. Maps Cardio is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle of Programs is 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle is 50% off. So those are all half off. If you're interested in any of them or all of them, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. That's Dude, I got to talk about, I've already brought him up probably three different times. Justin now is going down the rabbit hole of Jonathan uh, Pejau. I think that's how you say it. I think that's how you say it. I love this guy. Dude, like, it, I knew you would I, go crazy. I wish he was around, man, when I was like in, it, you know, just sitting in the back of the church. And then I would ask like these really deep esoteric questions to pastors and to, and nobody had good answers for me ever. And like could explain the why in, in, in terms of like, uh, yeah, yeah. I get like, you know, sort of the surface of a lot of these parables and a lot of these things, but like, he just explains it on a level. It's just so, uh, distinctively, like I understand what he's talking he about. He gives this analogy. It's I've sent it to 15 different people. He gives this analogy of the value of symbolism and rituals and how they, they, they create and cause uh, integration in our behaviors and what we do. And he says, there's a period of time when you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, but you do it anyway because you're supposed to. But then you have an awakening. And he uses the best example I've ever heard in my entire life, Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi telling Karate Kid yeah. that, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, wax on. Daniel LaRusso. Yeah, yeah, do all these things. Wax the car, paint the fence, do yeah. all these different things. Uh -huh. and he has, the for all. He has no idea what he's doing. And he says in, in this video clip, he says, because you're too stupid to know. So just trust me and do it. And eventually all will be revealed. Yeah. And he goes, this is the value that we've lost. This is the value of symbolism and ritual. And because it's been with us for so long, we forgot. So mm -hmm. we throw it all away. 
because we oh, we don't need that. We throw it away. And so he says we're lost because of that. That's funny. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. No, it is. And the Karate Kid thing is great because it's like we just- Easy we, example. Yeah, because we shit, we'd be shitting on that right now. Like, oh, painting the fence. How's that going to help me with fighting? Yeah, well, I'm just doing chores for you. And, yeah. you know, and you just see it for like it's immediate- uh, you know, surface kind of value instead of going through the process. And like, that's where you learn everything. Yeah. Right? And I mean, how many times have you done that in your life where you look back and go, oh, that's, I'm so glad I went through all that. Yeah. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this thing right here. Yeah. But while you're going through it, you're like, I wish I wasn't doing this. This sucks. No. I mean, there's so many parallels to that, the fitness and like your journeyman story, all that stuff. <laughs> it just, it, it all ties in though. I mean, like it's, it's so hard to articulate to somebody like the why of like, especially doing something that's difficult like that, like, yeah. you know, going through and, and, and also trusting, we say trust the process all the time. And that's sort of like a sort of catchphrase we have, but really it's just like having to step in and have that faith in yes in what you're doing that it's going to end up in a, in a better result. And you, and you can't possibly know now because like he said, like you Daniel know what said, it's going to look like all the time. You're too stupid to know right now. So yeah. you just have to have faith and do it, you know, <laughs> which is, which is yeah. great. All right. So this is not timely because this already happened by the time this airs, but I want to bring up, uh, the, the, what happened at the white house where they had the, the pride, uh, you know, was it like a March or parade? And they had the, the, uh, was it a protest or was it just a march and stuff? No, that? they were there to celebrate. They hung up the the you know the rainbow flag and everything, and they had a a, a transgender you know um, I don't know, activist or person you know go topless in front of the White House. By the way, the White House came out and said you know this is old news now, but they came out and they basically said you are banned from coming back or whatever. The beginning of the backlash, I think. This is the beginning of the like okay, this is going too far. Yeah. You guys are, this isn't helping anybody type of deal. But the whole, here's what really makes me upset about all this. It, it, it isn't all that. Politicians are politicians. They're always going to pander. They're all bullshit. They're all fake. They only say what they say because they know their support and they're going to get voted in. And if it's not that, then if there is no support, nobody's got a spine. It's just the way it is. Okay. Yeah. And I accept that. Okay. I don't, bottom line. But here's what annoys the shit out of me. They, in, in, in the White House or these, these, these big, you know, Capitol buildings, they hang the American flag and then they put the rainbow flag or whatever. Here's why that annoys the shit of me. Because the American flag is all inclusive. It's the most fucking inclusive flag in the world. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah. That's it. That means... If you're gay, trans, straight, black, white, whatever, yeah. that flag is for We're everybody. We're in this together. And the idea of liberty, the idea that you know uh, all you know, quote unquote, men were created equal. Uh, that that right there, and although it hasn't been expressed perfectly in the past, yeah. that's what's driven us to be leaders in the world for all of these different things. We need to move away from like, like what's happened. What's been happening now for the last decade or so is this division, 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 division. We're going the wrong direction. Yeah. Like th that flag and our anthem and this country, that represents everybody. Immigrants, yeah, we're men, so divorced women, from it. children, you you know, that's it. We don't have to agree with each other, but we're all protected the same way and that and that's that. And yeah, everybody people have different experiences, but we got to stop this like the strange dividing that's happening. We're going backwards. That's that's the that's the that's my rant. Do you think that a lot of this stuff is really um like the root of it is coming from our our population or do you think a lot of it really is driven by politicians and media <sighs> to to divide and to conquer and That's, to separate like yes. i don't like i don't I don't run into a lot of these people. Down. It's not yeah, a, a lot of these a, a lot of this up. radical stuff that we see on both the left and the right um that gets highlighted on Fox or CNN or on your your whatever channel that you follow uh on social media um, I just don't see a lot of that in real life. I just don't see a lot of that, that, that radical behavior in real life. I feel like that gets highlighted to intentionally it gets exploited cause. It yeah, get exactly. Exploited. It gets, it gets, it gets highlighted to, to use it to divide us more. And I wonder that, okay. And, and I know you're, you're bringing this up because it's like, Oh, finally, are we finally to see this like backlash and pushback from this? I mean, the, <laughs> The, 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 I don't know if it's a realist or pessimistic attitude about it. I just, the, we'll just find something else. Yeah. We'll just find something else to, to divide well, us and separate. And like, until people wake the fuck up, okay, and here, really yes. start to piece this together, it's yes. like, you know, who knows what it'll be next, but this just seemed like it's the easiest way to divide here's us. Here's right my now. fear. My, because here's what happens there's a, there's a, if a movement starts to gain steam, it gets identified. 
by politicians or by media and it becomes exploited. It gets infiltrated, okay? Because it, be, it gets used like a tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It becomes wielded like a weapon. So mm -hmm. here's my fear. Right now what we're seeing is what seems to be like this backlash against this, the extreme, uh, some of the extreme components of the LGBT community, okay? We saw this with Target. We saw this with, you know, Bud Reiser going a little too far or whatever. Uh, now, you know, topless transgender people in the White House. Now the White House finally came out and said, you are banned from coming back. Um, what I'm afraid of is the backlash is going to get infiltrated by people who are now not going to say things like, hey man, stop, you know, stop doing these shows in front of the kids where you're half naked or whatever. Like that's inappropriate. Now what they're going to start to do is say, hey, we need to ban gay marriage again. Let's go backwards. Right. That's what I'm afraid of. I'm yeah. afraid it's going to fuel. It's You can already see some signs of that. Which yes. Is not good. Yeah. So that's why I mean, <sighs> we, we got exactly what you said, Adam. We need to be very careful because- yeah. It gets exploited, exploited either way. And there's, 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 I guess, negative and evil on either side. Yep. And we need to be very careful. Even if we agree with some of the sentiment, we got to make sure we, we stay awake and say, wait a minute, hold on. I don't support going that, like you're going way too hard. Well, and there's, again, to your point of like media and what they choose to kind of like hand pick out, out there in the environment is like, there's groups out there that are like, um, you know, gays against groomers is a, is a good example of that. It's just like people that are just like, you know, I don't. I don't see where this is appropriate, you know, if, if this is a very sexual presentation and, and like, we don't, we don't subscribe to that. Like we're, we're trying to live our lives just like everybody else. And like, this is not something like we're, we're putting all of our uh, emphasis towards and doesn't represent us well. And so it's like, you know, they're, unfortunately we're in this weird climate where everybody has to like profess their values, profess their belief system, profess everything. Otherwise it's going to get manipulated and turn into something else. Yeah. And yeah, I think that, I think what we're experiencing is the, the last, you know, gasping or grasping for air, uh, or your, your dying breaths of legacy media. Probably. I think it's on its way out. Yeah. They're going if, more and more it crazy. It feels right? the most. They can't die soon enough. And, and it, but I'll it's going honest. to, and it is, everything is showing is pointing in that direction that it's in. I mean, you have the, the Tucker Carlson's who are leaving the Fox channel. Like you're seeing more and more of these big names that actually carry most of the weight with this legacy, me legacy me media are now leaving and it's only a matter of time before everybody just agrees that like it all is trash. Yeah. Fox, CNN, all if it's on the news, I don't believe it. If it's on the news, it's, we're getting real well, close to if it's on the news. If you tell me now, like honestly, that's actually how I feel like I already filter information. So if someone tells me something, I'm like, oh, where did you get that? Oh, I saw it on CNN or Fox. Like right. I automatically like, okay, I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, like, that, that's <laughs> that, to me, it hasn't been confirmed yet. Well, if, you, a, if you heard on the news, to me, it's not confirmed now. <laughs> well, here here comes yeah. the turd in the punch bowl. Okay. Because we're getting to a point soon, very soon, where AI is going to get so good that you're not going to be able to tell no, no. what is real and what is fake no, and what no. people are going to beg for. People are going to beg for arbitrators of real, of authenticity. They're going to beg, please give us some kind of a regulation or certification that shows us that this is real because we can't tell anymore. So this is where so I that's going to give more power to to sm to less people, not not less. Yeah. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I feel more and more people. I mean, how many people do you guys know listen to the show that claim and you've heard this that say that they, they get their news from us opposed to watching the news because we're they've built a relationship and a trust with us mm -hmm. that the way we're going that that their values and morals align with ours so that we are going to filter whatever is being put out there before we just put it out before we just, well, just look at the numbers look at the numbers of like joe rogan or like some of these big shows that are just like more free speech free thinking type of shows like they get all they get so many more subscribers so many more views but like the legacy media doesn't want to highlight that so let me okay so yeah, fast forward again let's say for some reason we become this big uh, voice and we, we they want someone on the other side or whatever wants to attack us and they can create fake images or videos of us doing things that we didn't do and now we have to go out and how are we going to combat that people are going to beg for arbitrators of authenticity and that's going to give more power to less people. They're going to beg the government. We need a seal of authenticity because we can't trust anything. So and it, it's just going to do this so, circle so, right back. So to where we yes and no, right? So initially, yes, right. Mm -hmm. That that's probably what's going to happen, and it'll be like yeah. that. But then again, I'm hoping the market. There's going to be the so much distrust. Okay, let's yeah. let's 
let's not even pretend we're this massive voice. We're the same size, okay? Let's say it's about a million people or whatever that pay attention to us, that trust us. And then fast forward, like you were saying, maybe initially there's this like growing pains of like people learning that like this shit that people start to do. To, I mean, Candace Owens is going through it right now. She just got pulled off of her YouTube channel. It's like they're targeting her, doesn't even know why. Yeah. It's like, so that's, it's already happening what you're saying. Okay, that and they're and they're putting out disinformation about her in order to get to cancel her and stuff. Pretty soon here, the people that are loyal to you and believe it, they're going to believe what you have to say over what AI and everything else. Yeah, but put what out. if it can make you say what they want and it looks the same? Yeah, so what I'm saying is, people are going to beg for a way to know. They're going to beg for, for someone like to arbitrate it. That are that are going to be out there, like voicing our voices and saying things that they like. Sure, there'll have to be there'll be like security measures around platforms like let's say Spotify or YouTube. Like so, the only way you get to hear information from us. So if it didn't Maybe come the from our themselves, that's right. The you, exactly, okay. they, they, and there'll be value mm. in being a platform that, right. that offers that. That's a great. Yeah, no, that's a what great you get, point. So that's a market response. That's I right. Love that better. You come over to Spotify, and what yeah. we guarantee is that if it comes from Spotify, it came from that voice. Yeah. Yes. And so we have put up. We have built. My, the, my fear is there's going right. to be a bunch of like it could be and there will Adam Sal's and Justin's out there. It's not us. They're like, oh, these guys look what they're doing. They're not. I mean, yeah, you saw that scare like we talked about this a while ago about like you know this this new manipulative way of people extorting money like on phones I know. you know copying your exact voice yeah. and then asking you know for money because they're in a, an emergency yeah i know yeah I know. it's crazy i don't but, know i just i just look I, I just want people to, to, to there's a couple things here that you could do one is activism should be about you actually going and helping someone not being angry and yelling. That's yeah. it for, and it's also way more. Arthur Brooks talks about this. It's way more fulfilling. It's also much help. It actually helps more, right? Yeah. As well. So that's number one. And then number two, it's unifying. Number two, there's dignity and respect that each individual deserves. And if they treat you shit, you know, shitty, they hurt you or whatever, they go after your kids, whatever. That's different. Now, then, then, then the game is on. But otherwise, like I had somebody tell me, I got into, I was on a Twitter debate and someone was or, or discussion and some and I was talking about these like these parents that bring their kids to these sexualized drag shows. I'm like, this is insane. What kind of parents do this? Well, what about parents who bring their kids to Hooters? I said, they're stupid too. Yeah. Why does that make it any different? <laughs> yeah, I'm not defending that. Yeah, Just because yeah. it's a dude that's doing it versus a girl. Like no. you take your kid to it's a strip like club. A, yeah, more like a Or, you know, club. it's the same yeah. thing. You're yeah. still like- You're a degenerate you, dad. Yeah, so like you got to be the, consistent. The difference though is that, just so, to make be clear here, is that the parents had the option to take the kids to the Hooters, which would be a stupid decision for them to do, yeah. where you're in a public school where they are, they're they forced, up. They're forced to be I at know. and they show up. So there is definitely a, a clear difference. That's crazy. Both parents are idiots, right? Like in that situation. Situation who's advocating for yeah. you know these these drag queens to read stories to five year olds of that that's ridiculous and so would be bringing your five year old or seven year old to Hooters it'd be just as irresponsible. Difference is that's a dumb choice that the parents make themselves to take them there, where some of these parents don't they, have the, the kids choice. Just, they don't even know. Yeah, they don't have the choice. I mean, school. That's the other thing that's that's kind of scary that's happening right now too is that some of this stuff is 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 happening and just parents are just unaware completely. Mm -hmm. heard, I've heard multiple stories of parents just not even knowing that like, oh, that well, was Well, again, legacy taught. media is going to like dismiss it and say this is all just like right-wing conspiracy. You know, there's just a, like, a lot of information out there that like will will stifle, you know, anything that's actually happening or not or or they'll exaggerate it on the other end too and, and say yeah. that's happening everywhere and you know so it's it's kind of like it's very it's very much like what narrative you're seeking is you'll be able to find something yeah and by the way the the, the public schools are losing students at record paces you I'm know that sure, sure. it's, it's it's breaking records right now how many parents are homeschooling the co the pandemic really boosted the shit out of that when right. parents saw what their kids were learning because they were at home they're like oh no i'm pulling you out yeah so it's like exploding right now some with well, some school districts actually not getting enough money because so many kids are, are pulling out. I mean, I hope that happens. I mean, that, again, that's back to your the, the market response. I hope the market responds that way, and then that they have to course correct because they they can't fund mm -hmm. the schools anymore. So. Speaking of schools, kids, and students, did you guys hear about Starlink's new engineer they just hired? Mm -mm. Uh oh. Okay, this is. I mean, this is. You want to talk about? I'm going to find the article because Starlink, as in Elon Musk. Yes, Starlink. dude. You ready for this? Mm. Fourteen year old Kiran Quasi Quasi. I think I'm saying his name right. From Santa Clara University. He's a graduate. So he's about 14, to graduate at 14? 14 years old. Is he, he the one with three degrees? Uh, I'm going to, let me see. Oh, there was know. one kid that I had like But you listen, so he's 14, graduating from Santa Clara University, and, he, the, and Starlink already uh, is going to hire him as a full-time <laughs> software engineer. 
Wow. At the yeah. age of nine. Well, he's already. I mean, yeah, at the age of nine. Okay, so he signed okay, up in community okay, college. Okay, so let me nine. let me hear let me hear you guys. What do you think? Like, think that through as a dad. What's what is your thought on that? Boy, that's right because he might have bro, the intelligence and all that, but that's still a bro, child. Oh yeah, it's a to child. get a job, a full time job. That's right, and you, you can't tell me that is he. He's not going to be robbed of his young adulthood and childhood by going straight into being an engineer. Yeah, Agreed. it's a tough Agreed. one. He's not a normal kid. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like which and then there's he's also a he's brilliant. Yeah, and so it's so like he's probably not stimulated like the rest of his peers. And maybe know? he really wants to do it. Maybe yeah, like, maybe he's more stimulated he's hanging out to. with adults. He's got to. There's no way they would force him into that, right? So there's definitely that. But then <laughs> there's he, also when he calls as a, the sick. This is mom calling for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, can't come to work okay. Let's just let's just play this out though a little bit. Okay, so let, you're the dad. And you have the kid, and he is. He's not forced to do this. He wants to do this. Like, what's yeah. the conversation like for you? Are you encouraging him to go do that? Are you telling him about about the potential of what he's missing out? What are you saying to your genius kid who wants to go be a, a I would an engineer at fourteen? Or I right? would have him do it. Uh, I would have him work way less than full time. Exactly. Yeah. I would not be full time. And then there would be I would, barriers around it for sure. We yeah, and then I would out. encourage him to build and start something of his own. Yes. to encourage mm -hmm. the creativity. That's what I would totally. do. Yeah. I would I would push that direction. Yeah. I would put like if you if you want to, to to keep doing the engineering thing, you still you want to level up. Like instead of us going into a, a working a job a nine to five at fourteen years old or something like that, let's build something together. I got, you got to. If I have a kid that's that damn smart. Uh, with my experience of building businesses, like we're going to build something. Hey, we're going to create something together. You know what I'm saying? Imagine like, how challenging this would be for his coworkers. Like you're in a meeting, you know, and you're like 30 year old, like <laughs> yeah. there's a 14 year old. And then, and then you say something and he corrects you. you. <laughs> like, no, actually that's the wrong code. You got to be like, a little Diggy Hauser. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, give you a wedgie. Yeah. <laughs> <That's just thinking laughs> that. How crazy is that though? Right? I, I mean, uh, imagine the challenges that come with that too, because again, you're 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 a genius when it comes to coding and things like that. But, but you're then still a child. you're still a child. I know. Social communication, leadership, you know, uh just wisdom, maturity. Yeah, yeah. Be able to, yeah, I just there's a lot of things that that person is gonna be that kid is gonna be way behind on. I wonder what uh I wonder what that pans out to be over the next four or five years. Yeah, and I wonder how, is a lot, how right? I would handle that as a dad. Mm. Is that even legal though? Hold on a second. Can you even 14? do a full-time job at 14? Uh, With you'd, consent, I'm You'd sure. have to make a yeah, special. So he actually commented on this. What do he say? So he says, I think there is a conventional mindset that I'm missing out on my childhood, of course, yeah. but I don't think that's true. I think, again, that mindset would have me graduating middle school now. And I don't think it makes sense for someone that's able to take rigorous graduate electives work yeah. in a prestigious co-op. I am joining SpaceX. You're still as a yeah, software I mean, you're, I mean, yeah. I mean he, he, he talks feels like, like you're holding them back, yeah, yeah. right? And then there's going to be resent there. So, yeah, it's a tough one. I yeah, mean, I mean, he doesn't know. Yeah, I was going to say from a from the narrow perspective of intelligence and mathematics and code writing, and like from that mm -hmm. perspective, like absolutely, you're right. right. Like, let's push. The education let's let you go like i would never want my son who's in middle school who could be crushing college to be like hold him back right be like no we don't want to excel yeah. ex accelerate like let him accelerate yeah. but there's a difference between accelerating your knowledge and learning and then going to work talk about how a okay, work for another what, company. What an interesting way to rebel. No, you can't go to work. Yeah. Dad, <laughs> you never let me do anything. You know? Watch me, dude. <laughs> I just want to build a rocket ship. He has a lunch it. pail. <laughs> Watch me, dad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go work. Oh, my oh, kid. He's such a rebel. Yeah. He never I'm getting over I mean, time. at 14, does he still break down and have like tantrums and shit like that and throw fits? Of course. He, I mean, he's 14. <laughs> yeah, you got it, right? You know? He's still going to have something like that. He's he becomes so, <laughs> dad, make me a sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, my son right now. So I, I promised that I would I would bring up anytime there's like difficult stuff. So we are, we, I, I think I brought up not long ago that we got on the, the baby tracker thing and he's like, oh, I shouldn't say baby, he's not a baby, but the, the tracker thing, right? So- He's like going through this growth spurt that's, you know, oh, yeah. should be ending any day now. And this morning I, I jump out of bed because I hear him like just having a meltdown. I'm like, never hear that from him. And I'm like, I get up and I'm like, and I think like Katrina is just like abandoning him or something because I'd never hear him meltdown like that. And I'm like, what is she doing? I get up and she's like left him. I'm like, what, what's going on there? She's like, just let him be. And I'm like, what? She's like, what's going on? His, his banana broke. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Bro, he's his fucking, he gets pissed, dude. Yeah, yeah. His banana broke in half, yeah. dude. And he just, a meltdown, you know what I'm saying? Just was so. Kids are funny. Yeah. It's just not right. And she's like, there's nothing you can say to him right now. There's nothing you can say to solve that other than maybe go get him a whole nother banana downstairs, which I think it was the last banana. So it was like. It's yeah, you can't stick it back yeah, on. Yeah, he can't stick it back on. So one time I, one time I started, That's I funny. broke it. Yeah. He didn't, Aurelius didn't see because he'll do the same thing. Yeah. Like, don't. I brought Jessica saw me. She goes, no. So I quickly held it with my hand and just fed him. Like, so oh, he's not going to notice. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's broken. That's what, I, so I didn't even know that was a thing. I told you guys on the podcast, I don't know. It was like almost a year ago. I think when I first figured we were driving in my truck somewhere and I was giving him his banana and I just, that was my natural thing was yeah, instead of giving, him, piece. giving my little two year old a full banana. I broke it in half and I broke it in half and <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Oh shit. What do you do? You know, Katrina's like, Oh no, you can't break his banana. You can't. I was like, well, that was news to me. Did I tell you guys, did I, tell you guys I have to sometimes peel, uh, Aurelius's chicken nuggets. Peel. Oh, he does like this, the fried so, skin. Yeah, dude, so, That's funny. But Bob, peel it. I'm like, peel it. Wasn't that an apple? What am I peeling? He's like, take skin off. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, God. Yeah, you're like, well, so it's, he- like, it's healthier. He's just got white nuggets, you know? <laughs> Nothing else. Like, this is the, not the tasty part. What's yeah, up, that's, yeah, that's of, of, all the, of all the things. That's hilarious. I know, dude. You got to peel it. Oh, well, I tell you what, too. And shout out. I, I know I don't. I probably don't do enough of shouting Katrina out for what she does. But I did. I called her today after, after the fact because of all that. I actually got up. Uh, he never comes in on my side. He came in to the bedroom and he actually uh, crawled in on my side of the bed. And I thought, oh, that was interesting. Was, he ne- he's never does that. He either comes down the middle and then cuddles up with Katrina or goes to her side. He actually came to my side and crawled in. And so I thought, oh, okay, here's an opportunity where you know, I could be a good dad and I'll, I'll put him back down instead of having her get up because he actually came to me, right? Because normally he, just, he will refuse me to do it and mm-hmm. it's her and it's like, oh, it sucks for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he wants you, right? So he came to me and I'm like, okay, I should do the right thing. I should get up and I'll, I'll take him, right? So I, I took him to bed. But man, I don't... So back to my teasing me about peeing sitting down like and Doug's story too of falling asleep on sitting down. That When I get up to go pee, that's another reason why I do this is that I can stay almost asleep and like plop down on the toilet, go pee, and then come back and then fall back asleep. If I wake up, then it's hard to go. I'm back. fucking awake, man. And so I was up for like three hours in the middle of the night after I because I got up, I walked him to bed, I rubbed his back a little bit till he fell asleep. And then you were done. And then I was then I was oh. up. So I'm like exhausted, man. And then in the morning I hear him kind of breaking down, and she totally like left me alone. And so I like I called her and I just said, hey, you know I. For, I always do. I told you guys whenever I tell her I love you that I, there's a reason what I'm thinking, right? So I told her that. She called. She says, what are you thinking about? And, oh, I said, let me tell you. And I, then I told her, I said, I just appreciate that you just handle that stuff and you don't ever say anything. You don't ever complain. You don't ever say, it's your turn. Like, And, and, and I know a lot of relationships, they, they do that, yeah. right? It's like, I got up last night, so it's your turn to get up this night. Like, she handles all of that and I don't ever have to. And like, I was, I briefly had to have an example of what it was like to not have a good night's rest of doing that and realize like, oh my God, if I had to do that 50% of the time, I would be just a, you guys would hate me. Yeah. You think mm-hmm. I'm a pain in the ass to deal with? I think that's yes, why she doesn't because she knows she would hate <laughs> you too. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> she's keeping the peace it's, for keeps us. the business together. Right? I'd rather be sleep It's not just God. you, it's us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so like, We write her text, just, yeah. just let him sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm terrible about saying something, so I got to be better about that. You just take that stuff for granted, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like totally. uh, with your partner sometimes, those little things well, like that. Well, I have to uh, share some news. Uh, my... Um, You're pregnant. Yeah, wow, it's it happened, you guys. Um, <laughs> no, <the>, twenty twenty three. <laughs> no, my prediction, you know, with the whole AI being um, the somewhat Antichrist? of the Antichrist. There's a church in Germany that's now using Chat GPT to do its preaching to do its entire service. Oh my so god! It's, it's, it's so far right now, like uh, the. The preachers used it. It's like 85%. And so we'll prompt it and we'll actually like, but they follow to exactly, um, you know, each part of it from the hymns singing to um, the the actual format and, and the whole and entire sermon is like all written out through chat GPT. Wow. It's just trippy, right? Like it's, it's happening already. The takeover is going to be so easy because they're already going to have, they're going to yeah. have everything already. Because now you're just the guy standing up there, take it away. You know? Wow. And it's like, why why be the guy and then just go right to, yeah, the, that's it. That's to the machine? I've actually already used it for that before. So there's been times already, I've, I've used it twice like that, where um, I, I wish I remember, and I have it in my notes, so maybe I'll look it up for the audience to, to figure out what it was. But it was, there was something like that Katrina and I were, were challenged with, 
And I'm like, you know what? Like, I, there's just I, the Bible verse is slipping me that it's like so good for this thing. And so I actually did chat GBT and I said, uh, what does the Bible say about X, Y, oh, and Z? Okay. And give it to me in the like top 10 or what that. And it, and it like listed out and was like beautiful. Like, I mean, it gave me like all 10 of the different verses and like the meaning behind all that. Like, and so. I mean, the, the power of that thing is in, is incredible. So you know that yeah. there's some women. I see what they're doing. You know, you know yeah. that there's some women that are having that have AI boyfriends already, right? Do you guys know this? What? Doug, look up. Uh, uh, Doug, look up women with AI boyfriends. There's these. There's there's women that are bo- like they'll, they'll consider their AI their boyfriend because it yeah. talks to them, it understands them. He really listens. He really, he really yes. listens to everything <laughs> I tell him to do. That's, Did you find it, Doug? Uh, the yeah. They have what does the article say mm-hmm. there? I don't, the screen's not up. I'm sorry. Can... Yeah, I'm pulling it up here. No worries. Uh, yeah. So um, it's already started, you know, and this is without a form, like yeah. a physical form. Yeah. I mean, you add a physical form now. Ugh. Well, isn't that, I mean, that's obviously that's a factor, but it's not one of the highest factors, you know, for women in terms of yeah. like, you know, what they're that's why really it's women seeking. Right now. Yeah. When they have physical I was going to say for men, huge. that's like, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> sit here and like chat about things. <laughs> Stop this talking. Turn me on. What is that? <laughs> hey, it's so you know, so great. Hold on, we, what does that say? What does that say there? Something called "Man of Your Dreams" for three hundred dollars. It sells an AI companion that wow. will never die, argue, or cheat. <laughs> oh wow! Oh. Except if you stop paying it, that's like the selling yeah. point on it. That's so bad. Wow. Like, hey, there's. I mean, yeah. see, women falling in love with their AI boyfriends. That's that's a that's an article. Wow. They'll get I, bored. You have to like every now and then you make one like cheat. I mean, all of this to me just, guy, I mean, guy. Uh, all of this to me is, uh, it, I mean, there's parts of it where like, oh my God, this is so surprising. But it's like, it just is falling right in line with the unplugged plug theory. I just think yeah. that like. I like how you refer to your theory as the theory. Yes. Yeah, so, just trying to make it like. <laughs> And you know why? Because if I, if I don't, that if I don't say it enough, there? if I don't say it enough, what will happen, it'll happen. And we'll be like. Whoa, this is crazy. I'm a motherfucker, I've been saying that for years yeah. on this spot. Years I've been saying that. And it's even gonna be called that. It's gonna be plugged in you, and you unplugged. You know what? It, you need to name it something. That's what they're plugged in and unplugged. That's it'll not be a good you, No, that's how they're gonna call no. it. They're gonna call it plugged in and unplugged. And that's how it'll be like. Are you plugged sure in? Bruce Willis was in that movie. Was it uh, the that, one that that's uh um uh uh it, it, it uh, Chet, it's right at the tip of my tongue. Chat no. GPT would know. I know. Let's be great for our ask, producers here. It's uh, yes, Chat GPT. No, you know which one it is. Yeah, I do. I it's just, the you know which one he's talking up. about, right? Where it's all Bruce Willis is like you. You lay in these these chairs and you're plugged in all day long, and you live in the virtual world. Yeah, like you, Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called. Is this uh, the one where he's a taxi driver in the future? Or is that something else? No, that's, that's something else. else. Okay. This one is called God. That's Fifth Element. Fifth element. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. It. yeah, this one, I mean, and I actually think it, it's one of the better depiction of what I think is going to happen, which is this kind of, everyone will still have these kind of home, like player one, player one is it's a little more dystopian, right? Yeah. It's like this, like, you know, everyone's stacked on trailer park, whatever. But this is more like you have normal homes, but nobody goes outside. See, here's why I think you need to name it something different. I don't think the plugged in are going to be called anything. I think they're going to be just people. Normal, yeah. Yes. And then it'll be unplugged. The unplugged are going to have a name. Those are the weird ones. Like, oh, you're one of the unplugged, whatever. You're, oh, you're, wait, wait, wait. What is it? Uh, manual. No, what's no, no, the term? no, 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 no. organic. Surrogates. Surrogates. Not organic. What is what? the term? Is it surrogates? Yes, yeah, surrogates. surrogates. Da, ju- Justin, what's it called? You play electric guitar or acoustic, or is there another term for that where there's like no electricity? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, you do call acoustic. it kind of unplugged or is acoustic. Is it just acoustic? Yes, acoustic yeah, is, acoustic. is, yeah, anything. I like organics. Organic yeah. sounds organic. like, yeah. Organi- oh, you're, you live organically. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're an organic, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah How yeah. can you tell? Well, your yeah. face is crooked. Acapella, yeah. is that what you're trying to think of? No, with no, no. It was acoustic. I think that's what you were trying to allude to. Something like that. I mean, it might be some different name or whatever, but I mean, it's. I'll come up with a name. I for feel you. like it's gonna yeah, take credit for it. It's, <laughs> that's what I'm. Mean. theory. Everyone's gonna be like, "Man, Sal hit it right on the head." <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm acapella. He's auto tuned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Hey, did you guys? Uh, did you guys hear what happened? Wow, don't change. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, it's it's just, just, all of a sudden, that just he, happened. Right he became there. younger. <laughs> a little bit more. Hey, if you haven't watched Sarah Gets, you should watch it. It's a worth watch. Did you guys hear what happened in San Francisco? The Westgate. Yes. Ladies. Oh yeah, I'm glad you're bringing this up. So they dude. they got they're shutting down because they already closed down Nordstrom's. Yeah. Nordstrom's left, right? Yeah. And it was because of, was it because of the theft? Okay, per month, like what was their nut? It was like five hundred something million they had to uh, make. There's no foot traffic. There's none. I'm trying to look it up right now. Okay, uh, so that's what happened. It was no foot traffic. It wasn't actually theft. I thought it was theft. Well, like, nobody's up there buying anything. Well, Nobody wants to be there. Yeah. Why is foot traffic down? 
There's theft. There's drugs. drugs homelessness. Is, homeless and crime. Shit yes. So they're 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 gone, and and they follow lots of retailers that have left. Amber Crombie and Fitch left, and. You know what's weird about CBS, that? You bring Whole it up. Foods shut down. It's a very right. obvious, glaring problem, and it's like the whole city's decaying, and it looks like it's going to be on its way to Detroit. And like some people, you bring it up, and they just uh, yeah. they, they like don't want to like acknowledge it or admit that it's like a completely disintegrating, failing. Well, I mean, it's because you're literally insulting their home. That's why, dude. It's it's awful. Up I mean, there, but you're, dude. it is. But I mean, yeah. imagine you're committed, right? You're on your. You've owned a home there for 20 years. Maybe yeah. you're on your second generation of living up then there. Then why aren't you fighting for change? Yeah. I why mean, aren't you yeah. actually like trying to implement things that are going to clean up the city, bring back law, order, get rid of all of this like just complete destructive behavior? Yeah. So uh, Banana Republic left. You said Nordstrom uh, left. Yeah, I saw uh, Nordstrom. Was one I yeah. Saw. So um, the 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 occupancy of the center went down to 55. percent by, by the way, I've I, never seen it look like this. I dude. think I commercial vacancies in San Francisco wasn't it like over thirty percent or something it's like that. Higher than that, I think. Mm. I, think it's I like mean, 55. that's you know what that means. You can't recover. That's yeah. what that means. Yeah. That they're, they're, you wouldn't be able to recover because oh. you reach a certain point, you can't even fix it. What they a major, do is, major hotel chain just pulled out too. They ought to. They ought to switch it to freaking what you call it to like a, a homeless shelters then. Change all that office space to homeless shelters and get them up off the street or something. Well, if I it's mean, a, figure out something, you got to have medical services. You yeah, can't just yeah, shelter. Yeah, no, yeah, no, but we it, need is it worse than them being on the street. We need mental health stuff? Uh, facilities to accommodate. Did you see? Since you're, you brought up real estate, I actually forgot to tell you guys this. Did you see what Blackstone just just put together a fund of thirty one uh, thirty one billion to for to for go what? buy a house, buying up properties again? Yeah, dude. I mean, if they if they infuse. Thirty-one billion dollars wow. in, in buying up properties over there. Like, could we actually not see this this housing market really go down much? How 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 long? How can long we can go? they string this? I out? mean, it, we may just be. Well, it. nobody wants to get out of their house. Everybody's got hella equity, so mm -hmm. they could raise interest rates all they want. It, people are like, I'm did not. Did you leaving. see that? I posted. Yeah. I posted that the other day of the amount. I'll show you the stat on. Did you see that, Justin? I I think no. I, I think I shared it with Sal. I don't know if I shared it with you. There, here it is, right here. Uh, so 67.6% have paid their mortgages off or have at least 50% equity. Almost 70% of people have- So they're not going anywhere. Yes, yeah. have 50% or more equity. It means their houses were double of what they have of, of, and, and or it's paid off. Then there's another 20, or no, excuse me, another 32.4% mortgaged homes with less than 50% equity. And then, uh, and then thirty eight point seven own. Excuse me. And then there another twenty eight point nine percent mortgage homes with greater than fifty percent equity. It's like insane. Yeah. There's no. There, and then no. if you have a loan, there's no way you would get into a loan that's seven eight percent interest when you're sitting on that much equity and yep. a three four five percent loan. Yeah. What do you think they're doing? Just lower Is rates. There again? any stats right now on like in terms of people selling homes right now, numbers wise, like because. Usually right now, before, while it's getting into summer, that's when like uh, yeah. So we're I mean it's so they 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 go off of like an, a rolling inventory to to tell you if like how much where we are and stuff like that. And you want to have like six months when you want to see when you see it come the other way. We still only like in the Bay Area have like three months of inventory for homes, which is still a shortage. Yeah. So we still have the and the, and that's part of why we have the shortage though. One, we underbuilt for the last decade, and then in addition to that, you have people that are just are not going to sell mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Now. That you would think that they would potentially reduce rates to stimulate, but what you might just see is you might just see you won't see the rates go anywhere. What you might see is big funds come in yeah, and buy up, the, buy up the real estate, which will just, just drive swoop it up. It'll yeah. just drive it up even further. So That's crazy. we just might be moving to a new time of renting. Yeah, everybody's a renter, and if you're not a renter, if you own, it's a you know two million dollars to get in on a property or whatever like that. So uh, yeah, you know what's cool is uh, on the Airbnb front or whatever. You know, a lot of people we know this, Adam. I showed you this, or, or you you maybe you showed me. A lot of people are buying land and building like yeah. fancy like yurts and tents and shit, and they're uh, renting them out like crazy. And people are doing it for vacation and making killing. I killing have seen that. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not a, even houses. They're just like it's a fancy tent. It's no, tent. they buy like a, I'm a glamping. Piece, of, piece of property out in the middle of nowhere. It has like a pond in the middle, and then throw like five or six you know fancy yurts around it and some running water. And they'll and, charge like five hundred dollars a night. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I love it as a business wow. idea. I think yeah, it's a, that's I smart. think it's a it's a it's a, a great strategy right now. Totally. So. 
Um, so uh, Organifi mention is coming up here, and um, I, I want to say something I don't think we've communicated very often, which is that their products are actually third-party tested for glyphosate residue. They're glyphosate residue-free. So glyphosates are what mm. they spray on GMOs, uh, but also oftentimes you can get organic products that are organic, because, but because the plants or whatever were grown next to conventional plants or farms, they get glyphosates on them. Wow, I haven't seen that marketed from other companies. Is that are they unique in uh, because it's harder? It's harder. To, it's harder to control. It's, it's easier. More expensive. It's, easier, it's easier to control organic and say you're organic. Yep. You have but to it's do additional to testing for glyphosates. Yeah. So they test their stuff for glyphosate. Now glyphosates. Why don't you want glyphosate residue? Because glyphosates kill weeds. That's why they exist. They act on something called the shikimate pathway, which is also present in bacteria. So not your cells, but the bacteria in your body in your gut can get influenced by glyphosates. They almost can act like a mild antibiotic. So you want to talk well, about something that may contribute to poor gut health. Mm -hmm. You want to stay away from glyphosate. Well, isn't that the theory on what makes GMO really bad? Because there's a lot of genetically modified foods. I mean, yeah, the argument- about Z-Biotic. Z-Biotic is a GMO, right? So there's yeah. not not everything that's GMO is technically, quote unquote, bad. No, 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 no. No. But, and, but where most of the- It's the, the glyphosate that they douse them in. Right. That's the thing that you got to watch out for. Right. It's not the corn. It's yeah. the fact that they- Spray is the it, shit out of the corn. Is it an insecticide or an herbicide? Glyphosates are herbicides. Herbicide. Yeah. yeah. And they kill plants through a pathway that doesn't exist in the human body. So yeah. they're like, it's safe. What's the, what's the difference between an insecticide and an herbicide? Insects. One and targets one insects plants. and they're... Uh, what, so like, herbicide kills plants? Mm -hmm. Herbs kill... Yeah, herb. like, like weeds. Yeah, weeds. Basically a weed killer. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. And then insecticide so kills. So weed killer versus like raid. You I mean, wouldn't they do both? If you do one, you would do the other? Or is there situations where oh, yeah, you they, do one? They, they, they definitely blast plants with insecticides, for sure. But glyphosates are unique because glyphosates will kill all plants. But you can genetically modify a plant to so not die from right. the glyphosate. Now you can spray the shit out of the crop and all the non-GMO weeds die. Yeah. So it's like this brilliant way of like reducing costs and increasing yield. But then you eat your corn or your plant or whatever. You're, you get know, the residue from it. And you get yeah, glyphosate in your system. And it's supposedly safe, but it interacts with this. But it also interacts with the bacteria in the soil. So it's like sterilizing the soil over time. Well, it gets up in the clouds, rains, rains back down. down. And this is why- it Transfers elsewhere. This is why organic foods can have glyphosates yeah. on them, even though they're not technically, you know, deliberately sprayed. Yeah, it's, it's a glyphosate. But Organifi, again, everything's glyphosate, residue-free, third-party tested. So it's really good. Wow. All right, we're going to shout out um, one of our latest employees, Steve Kopshaw. You can find him on Instagram, Mind Pump Steve. We brought him on board to work on a special project. Can't talk about it, but it's pretty awesome. Anyways, he's been a pretty awesome addition to the team. Already. Great Love guy. it. Yeah. Fantastic. Ice baths help boost recovery, reduce inflammation, can boost catecholamine production. Those are those feel-good chemicals that can give you energy. It's also a mild antidepressant. The problem is like, what do you do? You buy a big tub, fill it with ice and water, then you got to empty it out, it's a pain in the butt. Well, anyway, there's a company called The Cold Plunge that makes one with filtered water, ready to go whenever you want. Turn it on, leave it on. When you're ready to do your cold dip, just jump in and get those incredible benefits. Go check them out. It's very affordable. Go to thecoldplunge.com and use the code MINDPUMP and get $150 off your purchase. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Olivia from Florida. Hi, Olivia. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I just wanted to say thank you and a quick testament to how awesome you guys are and how much you know your stuff. My fiance was a long distance runner for years, ran for a D1 school, would run like 100 miles a week, said he would never give up running. I hate running. So I was like, let me get, let me get you hooked on mind pump and weightlifting. <laughs> so I real. converted him over. We ran anabolic together and this guy just hit 225 for bench in like three months of training and wow. i'm still struggling to do a plate so but it's fine <laughs> wow that's but, awesome yeah, so I just want to say thank you guys for that because now i don't have to go on runs with them <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> awesome no problem okay so i'll give some background info with my question because i think it'll make a little bit more sense but basically my questions is how i can train around a busy schedule while maintaining strength gains and compound lifts so I'm 23, 5'2", about 125 pounds. I ran anabolic from January to March and I loved it. Increased my strength in all the big three lifts and definitely put on muscle, especially in my quads and glutes because I need to get new scrub pants and jeans now. 
Um, I'm a veterinary medicine student and I'm starting clinical rotations and we rotate through different specialties in the hospital every two weeks. So starting Monday, I'll be rotating through our medicine specialty, which is pretty time consuming. The hours are about 6.30 a.m. or earlier to like 7, 7.30 p.m. or later, depending on the caseload. Um, and I'll be on that for four weeks, Monday through Friday and possibly weekends. And then I get a four week break of a more normal schedule, like eight to six. And then I'll have another four weeks going through surgery, which is the same as medicine, like kind of 6 a.m. to like 7 or 8 p.m. Um, so I won't really have time to commit to foundational workouts on those days. I wanted to start performance because I know the flow is typically anabolic performance and then aesthetic. And also I haven't trained performance style in probably about a year and a half, two years. And I've been training full body style since January. And before that, I spent a whole year training split style. So I feel like my body probably would benefit from that challenge. But I just can't really start that until later in the fall. And then I figured I could do aesthetic in the spring when my schedule lightens up a little bit. So for the time being, I wanted to get your guys' advice on how I can continue to challenge my body in new ways, especially while not losing strength in my compound lifts because um, I'm kind of worried about that a little bit. Yeah, this is with e easy answer, Olivia. We have a program that would be per perfect for you. MAPS 15, do the advanced okay. version. Basically, yeah. you'd be doing about 20 to 25 minutes a day uh, of compound lifts uh, and exercises. So you show up the gym, or if you have a barbell at home, about 20 to 25 minutes every day, you're doing maybe two exercises. And you're not just going to keep your gains. You're probably going to get stronger by following that. As long as nutrition okay. is good and as long as you're getting good sleep. I know it's stressful what you're about to do, so that could always yeah. throw a wrench. But you're mm -hmm. gonna, you'll love it. You're gonna be, and then when you're ready to do a more traditional workout, um, then I would switch to mass performance. But mass fifteen advanced version, done deal. Mm -hmm. It's centered around two com two compound lifts a day, basically. And so, and the way you can run it. So if it's a really busy, stressful week, you can keep the workouts just short, the 15, 20 minutes. If you find a day where you have a day off or you're well rested, you can actually combine the next workout together. So if you want, if you want to run it for 40 minutes, we, we wrote it in a way where you could stack it too. So it's like, you can have that flexibility of when you're in a time crunch, when you're not quite as rested, you can run just the 15, 20 minute version. When there's times where you're like, Oh, I got a whole, it's a weekend. And I don't have any work this weekend. Like I want to do a full hour type of workout. You can combine two of the workouts and run it like that. So there's some flexibility in it, but Running that, um, and since you already own performance, the only other thing that I would say potentially to add, if you have like these days where you've got some days off or you're really rested and you're like, I want to do a little more, it'd be mobility stuff because you, okay. already, you recognize that you've already been running kind of a bodybuilder and split type of routine in full body. You're probably neglecting some, some mobility work. And so we have that in performance. So if you want to you know, add an extra day in there or something where you're doing something, I would do the the mobility sessions that are in performance to complement MAPS 15 until you get back to your kind of normal schedule. Yeah. How long have you been working out consistently with strength training? Probably about three years now. You're going to probably get stronger with MAPS 15 then. You're, okay. Yeah. You're probably going to, this is going to, it's likely to be not just something that keeps you strong, but you probably are going to see yourself get stronger. That happened to me yeah. when we created the program and I ran it. Um, I hit uh, new lifts, new lift PRs. Did, and I totally did not anticipate that. So that's probably going to happen at the very least. You're, you're going to just, you're going to feel good. Yes. The frequency okay. element. Yeah. I think people uh, don't realize like how effective that is and just how much you can get just enough and then recover and then just keep that momentum going. But uh, it, it's definitely not just a, a preservation type of a, a, of a workout routine. It's definitely something that a lot of people have gained from. So yeah, the only, the only thing I'd say is just decide if you want to do it in the morning or after work. That's it. Yeah. I'm definitely like a morning movement type of person. I'm so used to like getting up at like 5 a.m. and going to the gym um, and I feel like if I don't get that movement and if I don't feel like I'm lifting as heavy or pushing myself the way I want to, I'll tend to like freak out and I'll want to overcorrect for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because I have some bands at home, so I didn't know if I should just switch to bands to save time mm -hmm. in the mornings. Like if, if there's a morning where I have to be there at like five 30 or six, so I was like, well, maybe I could do some bands, but I know like 
long term, I would just be itching to get back and like lift yeah. some heavy stuff. Olivia, so it would take a lot for me. To literally, back. this is what you do. Okay, literally, you shower. Before, this is a twenty minute workout. Okay, so you're not even going to sweat okay. much. Shower. Get get everything set up. Drive to the gym. Do your twenty minute maps fifteen workout, and then go straight mm -hmm. to work. Okay. Yep. You'll that be makes set. sense. And yep. so for those, um, the mass 15 workouts, I also have prime. So I do like a couple just movements beforehand before yeah. I've been doing my lifts. And sometimes that takes me like 10 to 15 minutes. Would I just be able to cut that out and just go straight into the lift? Depends how good your movement patterns are. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you've got really good movement patterns and the exercises are not ones that are like really challenging for you to get into, you could do one or two warm up sets of an exercise and then okay. you're going to be okay. Um, the I'll people that, that, that yeah, people it, that wouldn't work if you're like, man, when I squat, I get hip pain or I really need to make sure I could deadlift right because I tend to hurt myself. In that case, I would say, you know, make sure you do the priming. But if, yeah. if you feel good and you're okay, like a, one or two sets of warm up and get into the workout. You, you can even it. just reduce it down to one of those mobility exercises and do that beforehand. Okay. You know, the most effective one that you need. And then um, two, like throughout the day, it's going to be just as effective if you find a moment uh, to just perform that like for five minutes or something to break up, you know, whatever you're doing throughout the day, that's going to play. Uh, that's going to do very well for you. Okay. That makes sense. I'll probably be able to do the um, like warm up sets, maybe just like drop the weight a little bit to connect to the yep. muscle and then go through it. That's there it. Go. Yep. Exactly. Cool. So if, awesome. you don't, if you don't have Mass 15, we'll send that to you, okay? Oh, awesome. Thank you guys so much. No right, problem. Olivia. When are you getting married, by the way? Oh, um, 2025. I want to graduate vet school first and get all my ducks in a row. All right. <laughs> all right. Good Smart. for you. Smart. Yeah. Congratulations. Get it. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. guys, so much. You all got right. it. Yeah. You know what's funny? We, we wrote Mass 15, right? And, uh, how many DMs do we get from people who are like, I didn't think I'd hit PR. Yeah. I didn't think I'd build muscle. Like this is crazy. All the time. Yeah. 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 I keep getting them. Yeah. It's strange. And, and again, I think that people underestimate uh, the frequency yep. component. I also think it highlights something else that we have communicated on this podcast and we've admitted ourselves that we're guilty of this is obviously if you listen to a fitness podcast, you probably like, fitness yeah. into it, right? You're <laughs> yeah, probably, and, I would hope so. and probably a good percentage are even probably fitness fanatics like us. They could and, benefit from, and we tend less. to, <laughs> we tend to overreach sure. uh, and overtrain uh, and not count all the other stress in our life. Family member dies, school test work grinding like crazy. Right. Oh, and then I'm crushing the gym too. And it's like, you know, I think a lot of people didn't realize uh, that maybe scaling back the workout that would not hinder the results. In fact, it ended up accelerating a lot of people. You know, she brought up something else that we we don't talk too much that about, like an example of like where I cut out like my mobility stuff. And I think you guys answered it uh, perfect. And it's like, so if I'm if I'm going to squat, uh, and you said it's not like, that's a movement pattern where I have to do combat stretch. Mm -hmm. I've got to do like a quick yeah. zone one thing and prime my upper back to, 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 to perform a really, otherwise my low back will be feeling it. My hips will be feeling it and I'll pay for it afterwards. It's like, it's a non-negotiable that, but I can go into a deadlift cold. I can go into even overhead. Now, does that mean that I wouldn't benefit from doing prime movements? Absolutely, I would benefit, but I could go into those movements. You could cold. warm up with the movement. That's right. There's yeah. certain movements that are just, I absolutely have to prime in order to get myself in a favorable position. Then there's other movements that I can, it's, it would be ideal for me still to prime. And if I have the time, I'm definitely doing it. But if that's something where I'm like, shit, I'm crunched on time. It's okay. I'm deadlifting today. I can get right into that movement. Mm -hmm. So. Next caller is Kerry from Indiana. Kerry, what's happening? How can we help you? How you doing, guys? Good. Nice to see you. Good, man. Thank Good. you. I, uh, thanks for taking the time to have me on today. I really appreciate it. You got it. How can we help you? Uh, well, just to kind of give you a, a quick bio. So I, uh, I'm sure you've heard this story about a million times over your guys' years of training, but um, I, uh, I'm divorced, no kids over the last few years, especially during COVID. I put on a ton of weight. It's just been a rough few years like everybody else. I'm currently 45 years old and 5'10", uh, 305. Um, started working out seriously for the first time about three or four months ago and lost about 20, 25 pounds since then. And currently I am doing 170 grams of protein per day, 2,400 calories. I uh, get almost all my foods from Whole Foods, kind of took that advice from you guys as far as trying to stay away from the restaurants with seed oils and whatnot that you guys have taught me. And um, I quickly learned just kind of like going through podcasts and I found you guys a few months ago and I got into the gym and just love 
how much I've learned so far and I've gone back and listened to old episodes and just really appreciate everything you guys put out there. So just wanted to say thanks for that. And um, I'm just kind of at a point where like, I want to make sure that I'm getting everything I can out of my efforts and I'm not, I don't really know where to begin. I know I love, there's so many like maps programs and things out there that are available. And I love uh, listening to some of the, a lot of the callers talk about different programs, but I'm not really sure like, what would be best for me? I, I do have limited mobility at times just because of my weight. I feel like I can't even touch my toes like sometimes and hamstrings are tight from lifting lately. And, um, but I will say, I, like I said, I've lost about 20, 30 pounds so far. I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm doing, I'm getting PRs all the time because I'm lifting pretty heavy. Um, you know, I hear you guys talk about like reverse dieting versus cutting hit versus on two cardio or just walking. Um, I hear you guys talk about high reps versus low reps. Like, I, I'm not really sure, like, how, where to begin and how to, I guess, how to start this journey. Yeah, well, you came to the right place, for sure. And, and congratulations on your initial 20-pound weight loss. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so what does your workout look like now? How many days a week do you go to the gym? Uh, how long are your workouts? What are the exercises you tend to do? Yeah, I'm um, currently doing, a, like, a three-day split where, like, push, pull, legs. Um, I'm walking about 60 minutes on the other four days. Um, my workouts consist of usually about six exercises, about 18 reps, um, anywhere between on the, on the low end, like six reps, if I'm trying to lift heavy for a set or up to like 10 or 12 reps for, you know, some of the other sets, uh, largely I'm, I haven't really got much into like some of the core exercises that you guys have talked about as far as like squats or anything like that. It's more of a bench overhead press, um, yeah, more of the, you know, leg, mostly machines for legs currently, you know, uh, okay. you know, more of like kind of a beginner workouts that I found online. Okay. Carrie, can you do a deadlift and a squat and a barbell squat? Are you, have you tried those? I can. Okay. Uh, MAPS Anabolic would be the perfect program for you, but I would start you in pre-phase and I would okay. do, I would do pre-phase for about six weeks, maybe eight weeks, so six to eight weeks and then move to phase one and then follow the program. I think that'll be perfect for you. Okay. By the way, what you're doing actually, right now is not bad. Yeah, you're okay. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. actually doing okay right Which now. Which is why you're seeing great results. I, I think the only thing I would add, I, I might, I would probably bump your protein to like 200 grams. Exactly what I was going to say. So uh, I'd probably, I'd push you up a little bit on, but that's about it. I mean, like you, you're, so that will also bring your calories to probably about 2,600 calories or so. So I would love to put you okay. on MAPS Anabolic, like Sal said. That new stimulus, especially with the squatting and deadlifting, new movements in there right now, with an increase in grams of protein, I think you're going to see yourself continue to build muscle and continue to speed your metabolism up, which would be the main focus, I think, for the next probably six to eight weeks. Like he said, I, I love that direction. That's it. Now, the other thing I would do- But you're doing great, bro. You way. are. And, and the other thing I would do is Thank I would you. track your steps every day. Mm -hmm. and Which I do do that. Okay. Oh, so good. what are you averaging on a daily basis? <clears throat> Um, it kind of, I mean, honestly, like the four days that I'm walking in between my lifts, I get a lot more steps, but on average, probably about eight to 10,000. Okay, steps a day. good. So try to see if you could hit eight to 10,000 steps a day without the treadmill. That would be the one piece of advice I'll give you. Now, here's why not that there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with the treadmill. You're walking. There's nothing wrong with it. But long term, if we're going to try and create uh, habits and behaviors and a lifestyle that's sustainable. Cause here's the challenge. I'm gonna be honest with you. I know right now you're thinking the challenge is to lose the weight. It's actually not uh -huh. going to be the challenge. The challenge is gonna be keeping it off. Okay. Now they're both hard, but if I were to compare the two, losing the weight is significantly easier than keeping it off. Keeping, nobody keeps it off. Like, you know, maybe five to 10% of people are able to do it because what they this do is actually is, the third time I've tried to lose the weight. I've, I've lost hundred pounds twice in my life already. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so, you know, you know that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. First two times I didn't do it the health way. I'm trying to do it the right way this time. You right. are so far stay on this. And so rather than, tr than, than walking on a treadmill and getting those steps, see if you can challenge yourself to do it, uh, just throughout the day. Yeah. Okay. So what does that look like? And, and experiment with this. Literally you go to the store, park far away. You got to use the bathroom in the building. Use the one on the third floor. Take the stairs. Uh, you're, you know, you're in your chair. Let's say you're watching TV. Be like, you know what? I need to get some more steps. Walk around while watching. Like small things. It start. What happens? You start to develop different behaviors, and it's uh, you're you're more likely to be consistent with something like that than you are to stop, get on a treadmill for sixty minutes, you know, something like that. So that would be pretty much it. And then the protein, two hundred grams a day from Whole Foods 
eat the protein first if you're not doing that already. So whenever you look at your food, your mm-hmm. meal, whatever the protein is, eat that first, then move to the rest. That helps control cravings. It it, it helps with uh, satiety. It helps with blood sugar. And it's another great behavior to learn. What happened over time is as you start doing that, that's how you're going to prefer to to eat. That's like So when I was a kid growing up, we always ate the starches first. But then when I got into fitness, yep. I ate the protein first. Now I hate, I'll always eat the protein first, no matter what. It's just the way I prefer to eat. So it's another kind of behavior training tool. That would be the other thing I'd say, but but that's pretty much it. And then when we give you MAPS anabolic, pre-phase and in, in, in perfect form is the priority. Perfect form. Okay. okay. So it's all right to lift heavy. It's all right to go hard, but do not compromise your form even a quarter of an inch. Okay. Because- what the, the what you want to do over time is practice perfect movement, and that's going to pay you back dividends. Here's how we're going to make sure of that. Okay, we're going to make sure that when you lose this hundred pounds this time, that you keep it off forever. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna I'm gonna have Doug put you in the private forum also. And then what I my awesome. my ask of you is that when you start going through the Maps Anabolic program and you're squatting and you're deadlifting, show share the videos with us and tag us so we can help you with the form and technique make sure you're staying on point with all that and just check in with us continue to check in with us through your progress that's what that forum is there for it's an incredible community of a bunch of people like yourself that have gone through most of the programs and then us and make sure you stay in touch with us and we'll make sure that you you not only lose this but you keep it off forever Awesome. That is exactly what I'm looking for. I mean, anything I want, I just want to get leaner and sh- I want to, but I want to get strong. I don't want to just be skinny like I was before. You're doing it right, bro. You know, that's, that's the you're, you're, yeah. you're already doing it right. That's you're, the right attitude. Yeah, you're doing it. You're already doing it right right now. We're just going to make sure you stay on the stay on the course. Awesome. That is fantastic advice. I really appreciate it, guys. You got right. it, brother. All right, Carrie. Yeah, thanks for calling in, man. Mm, thanks a lot. You guys have a great day. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Wow. I'll tell you what. When he said that he's lost 100 pounds twice. Crazy, right? And now he's trying again. Like, mm-hmm. I, I want people just to understand that, that that is a big deal. Yeah. Because what tends to happen when somebody loses a lot of weight and gains it back, they never try again. Yeah. They never try. Or they'll try a second time. And if they try a second time and fail, which often happens, yeah. then they're done forever. So yeah. deflating. The fact that he's trying again um, is a testament. That's and, really, really good. And has the discipline to be patient. Yes. And do it the slow, right way. Because people tend to not do it better at second or third yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. No, you just get more extreme. Yes. Typically, people that do this, the second, the third, the fourth, however many times they do it's like, this. well, it didn't work that time. Go that's even right. crazier. That's right. They, they, they just keep upping the extreme diet or the extreme exercise routine to do that. So the fact that he's had the mes- mental discipline and fortitude to actually co- slow this process down, he's doing a great job. And, mm-hmm. I, and what's great is... He's only been doing machines for lower body when he starts squatting and oh deadlifting. Oh, it's going to be a world opened up. For yeah, him. increase yeah. that protein intake a little bit. He's going to pack on some more muscle. That metabolism is going to get roaring. It's, it's, he's on the right track, man. So I'm excited to stay in touch with him in the forum. Next caller is David from Minnesota. David, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. I just have a question for you, and I thought it was a pretty good one. Um I work from home, so I t- my spine tends to get compressed, and I know that certain things like walking and and pull ups and dead bar hangs help. But I still want to lift weights, and common sense tells me that like chest press and shoulder press are not a good idea while you're trying to be decompressed. But do you have other exercises that are safe to do in the meantime? Yes. And, and now you, you left, I I'm reading your question here. So there's, there's an important factor that, um, we want to consider when we answer this. So it says in the question that you have cerebral, uh, cerebral, cerebral palsy. Is that correct? Cerebral, cerebral palsy. palsy. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm going to give you a general answer. That's true for anybody. Okay. Any exercise that you can perform with good control and stability. Okay. Is safe. Any exercise. Okay. Now, specifically exercises that may help the spine. Um, I like the ones that you're already doing. I also like you sitting on things that require you to activate your core a little bit. Like a physio ball might be okay, or they sell certain chairs that require you to be a little stable. And there's also stand, uh, there's also standing desks that can help with that uh, as well. And and that's just, I mean, I advise that for, for most people anyway. And it, it does make a difference because it does require you to maintain yourself with different stability versus like just kind of sitting into the chair. That, that makes perfect sense. And for more context, I'm an accountant who works from home. So 
Yeah. That's pretty sedentary. Okay. Yes. Yep. Mm. Also, what do you what do you think about like bands and suspension trainer and stuff like that? Oh, I mean, amazing. Do you go to a gym or do you work out at home? I I work out at home. I do have like a lo a local gym nearby, but what does your I setup mostly, consist of? Yeah. Yeah. What do you I've have? Got, you I've got I've uh, got adjustable dumbbells, uh, like the what's it called the the dumbler that Norwegian dumbler where you fit plates on and it's got the magnetic clips. Oh, I've yeah, got okay. that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I've got every band you can imagine and a pull up bar door attachment and a dip stand. Oh, you, you know what would I be think symmetry would be really good too. Ma the, uh, well, I would go map starter. Yeah. I would just do map starter. I do you have any of our programs. I, I do not. I was, I was wondering which one would be like the best to, to get first because I thought, since I have all the bands, maybe bands would be good, but starting from step one might be a good idea. I'm going to give the you the experts. I'm going to give you I map starter. Both of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you map starter. We'll give you bands. You could do that I one later. Bands would be great too. But yeah. start yeah. with map starter. I think that would be the right program. And then remember what I said, right? If you can do an exercise and you feel like you've got adequate stability and control and mobility, then it's safe. Yeah. So any exercise could be dangerous and any exercise could be safe based off of those standards. So and the and the goal that I'm doing with you David if you're my client is I'm always challenging form, technique, yes. tempo, slow tempo, stability control. before I add load. So like, let's say you and I are doing an overhead press and you're like Adam, I'm kicking ass as this. Say we're doing say 90 pounds over your head and you're like we're we're super happy and you're like I can do more. I'm going to go like okay, what I want you to do is stabilize at the top, slow down the negative, and I'm going to make that 90 pounds even heavier and more challenging without adding load. So think that way too. So as you progress yourself through the movements in any of the programs that we have, before you just jump to adding more weight because you know you can do more weight, challenge yourself by slowing down the tempo or adding a stability component to the movement that's going to serve you much more than just adding 10 or 15 totally, pounds to the bar. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's a, that, that would be all the focus yeah. if, if I was training. 100%. Have you, when, how long have you been doing strength training? I, I've been doing strength training since I was about freshman in high school, uh, especially with cerebral palsy. It's sort of a game changer when it comes to just coordination and balance and like certain things that used to knock me over before mm. I started lifting legs did not. Like yeah. that, for example, it, it's it's awesome. it's one hundred percent the uh, the game changer for someone like yourself. One hundred percent, you're training when you're doing strength training. A lot of people think they're training their muscles, and you are, but you're training your central nervous system yes. as much or more. Yes, and that stability and that control factor is what I want you to focus on when you're following Map Starter. So when you look at the exercise and you do it. Go with a weight that is lighter and then try to make it heavier by doing a slower, more controlled run. Add that muscle tension too. So that, that slow tempo's, uh, tempo is everything, but really too, to really kind of squeeze and connect to those muscles yes. as you hold in full extension and then slowly bring it back down. It's just going to do wonders for you. So Yeah. And then we'll send you MAPS bands. That's a, that's a band related workout as well, but I think MAPS starter is a place to start. All right. Uh, stay in touch with us too. All right, David, let us know as you go through those. Cause then I even think there's some great benefits to symmetry for you after that. So I, I like starter, I like bands. And then I even like the isometric and unilateral work for you for, from symmetry. So we'll move into that after those. All right. Yeah. I'll do the program and I'll keep you guys up to date. Awesome. All Perfect, right, man. man. Thank you. All right, David. Keep All after right, it, man. You. Thank you. you. All right. I can't think of a job that would be more torturous for me than accountant. Oh, I know. He's like, I'm an accountant. I'm like, oh my god! You imagine sitting down the doing worst. numbers all day long. I ever yeah. tell you about ah, one of my sedentary. one of my high school best friends that we moved, he lived with me when oh, I moved to San Jose. I remember you he told got me a, this. he got a job with Deloitte and Touche, and that was back when I was working at the gym. And you know we we're you know the grinding gym schedule, yeah. right? Get home 10, 11 o'clock at night, and, and I loved the job, right? So I come home all like psyched, yeah, psyched and energy like we all did, right? And he'd come home just like he just got beat, and I'd be like, "What did you do today, dude?" He's like, bro, I fucking photocopied for 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I swear to God. He, and this was like every day. Yeah. He, and he's like, and literally, like office they almost like put you through the gauntlet. Like if you work for like one of these big firms, yeah. like that, they put you through the yeah. gauntlet 
for the until you make like partner and like that's like the deal is like you are the runt and you just do all the bitch work it's already a like a laborious job as it is yeah. right being an accountant and then you got to do all the bitch work on top of that to like earn your stripes before because once you become partner you make really good fucking money and he couldn't he's like he knew what the he knew what the pot of gold was at the end of the rainbow and he's like I still can't not worth it still he couldn't yeah he never never went back what did he end up doing so he's actually in the wine industry <laughs> oh, much yeah. more fun yeah, he he up, he's, up, way more yeah fun. he's very successful too he's he's up in the uh in fact i told you i think i showed you a picture of him he was at the laker warrior game down yeah. low with me we hadn't seen each other in years and I ran, ran into and you him. ran into him there? yeah That's yeah and he's doing all the the wine thing but yeah awesome. counting is well ba back to david have you guys trained yeah. anybody with cerebral palsy i have before? yeah and i've had i actually have a, we had a close family friend that had it but he was really like david looks like he's a, yeah he looks like he's 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 with it yeah know, like my buddy yeah, had, what like yeah there's very kind of real like walk, limited like, yeah. very well right yeah. strength training is such i mean it now it's standard care right when yeah. you have they, they do forms of strength training almost always yeah but uh, and and it just it it just makes such a well. Is, is well what I noticed when I had a client that had difficulty with it, it was like when she didn't show up. It was yes. Like the the symptoms got even worse. Yes. Well, isn't so. it is it is it considered a neurological degenerative disease? It, it, it can degenerate. I believe yes. so. Right. So can, I mean, yeah. you talk about if that's what's going to happen, it's going to atrophy and lose connect. I mean, nothing yeah. is going to be. That's better the counter. Than David, just right. keep going, man. That's right. It. That right. Helps. Right. Our next caller is Joe from Copenhagen. Joe, what's happening? How can we help you? Hello, guys. Um, so first of all, uh, I just want to thank you for putting yourself out there. And I actually found you like three years ago through Polchek. And since then, I just binged most of your stuff. And awesome. I also want to thank you for sharing your journeys as a father and as a man. It's very impactful and also be doubtful because just <laughs> growing up small, like raising small humans, it's uh, quite a responsibility. So I appreciate oh, yeah. you sharing your, <laughs> thank you. your journeys. Awesome. <laughs> Um, so a bit about me, uh, my background is, uh, I've been playing ice hockey until I was 20. Uh, I also did karate. I had a lot of injuries throughout the time, but the last one I had, uh, the most impactful that I also like why I'm here is I dislocated my shoulder and my elbow at the same time. And then I had a year later, I had lateral jet surgery because, um, yeah, it was just unstable. Um, so that was four years ago. Since then, it's been going better. I had had troubles with pushing and overhead pressing before I could do a like a L sit from the from the ground and go to the handstand. Now I'm happy that I can do L sit because my shoulder is just very painful, especially in the back of the, the back of the shoulder, where especially when I'm pressing and when I'm it's actually only when I'm pressing and when I'm moving my arms up. Um, so I have been doing. Uh, I did. Uh, Maps anabolic that helped because I also did additionally on like only like one sided dumbbell rows, uh, presses and kettlebell presses and then like high reps of those. But um, it's been very slow. So in four years, I have not been able to recover. I was able to to shoulder press like twenty four degrees, uh, twenty four kilograms with one with one hand. But uh, now I can do twenty and it's painful. So the question that I have really, uh, and I skipped a little bit, but the question that I have is, uh, what would you recommend? Would you recommend doing like something like symmetry or, um, and also I, I skipped something. So I don't have a, a gym membership. So the part of, of the problem is that I, I, I was a coaching. So I was a fitness coach. I, I, I don't coach anymore. Um, because of the finances and stuff. So I started doing gardening and I also canceled my gym membership because of that. So right now I'm, I'm doing gardening, a uh, day job. I am doing band training and calisthenics. And beside that, I'm trying to get uh, bigger and stronger and, and most of importantly, fix my shoulder so I can actually get bigger and stronger without problems. Okay, let's back up for a second. Okay. Yeah, I got scared. About the <laughs> okay, so uh, that's a lot of good information. Yeah. So, uh, ladder jet surgery. This is the one where uh, they remove some bone from a part of your body, attach it to the top of the shoulder, the humerus, um, yeah. and they try to create a tighter, basically a tighter shoulder socket to prevent further um, dislocation. Is that correct? Yes, yes, they repos reposition, they take the bone from the glenoid and they put it on the, or the, they put it on the glenoid, they take a bone from, 
around the, the clavicula. Okay. And um, how, yeah. did, how did you dislocate your shoulder? Because that, that was that's a pretty uh, substantial surgery. Uh, yeah, I got pushed from behind playing on ice hockey game. And yeah, during the game. Okay. I, I just, yeah. Okay. So traditional mobility work. Um, and cause what's here, here's the deal. Your structure is different now. Yeah. Okay. So when they do that, they've changed your structure, which essentially means all of the muscles and supporting structures, you, you literally have to relearn new pattern, whole new recruitment pattern. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not like it was before. So even if you had the old recruitment pattern, which you probably still lost because you went through the injury process and the surgery, even if you had that, it still would need to change a little bit because your anatomy is now different. Okay, so your anatomy has changed in, in a small but significant way. So correctional exercise is going to be paramount right now. Um, MAPS Prime Pro has uh, shoulder movements in there that I think you should do on a daily basis. And I think you should do them slowly and carefully with intention. And I don't know if you can expect to get back to where you were before, but you could definitely go a lot further than you are right now. So I, that's, that would be the priority is what I'd focus on. Yeah. As far as your workout is concerned, um, map symmetry would be the way to go, but you don't have dumbbells, do you? No, I have kettlebells. Okay. Wow. You're okay then. Yeah, you I could, think you can modify it. Oh, You'd yeah, be all right. You could do with kettlebells. Yep. Yeah. I think too, like you said, in terms of like really hyper-focusing on the, what's, um, you know, your mobility issues, um, and, and repatterning that whole process. But then too, like after you get through kind of that, that isometric kind of kin stretch type of work, uh, to add load, I would I'd very much like start with, with rubber bands with that as your next kind of follow up to that, just because of, you know, the load damage with that. And also like the consistent sort of, uh, resistance that you're going to have to then, cause you just got to take some time to realize like you know you, you have to you have to reteach you know that function out of that shoulder before we really start to kind of get to where you, I know you want to go because you've been able to lift you know quite some weight there with your shoulder before but uh, to reteach it and then also go through kind of more unilateral work so we can uh, simultaneously kind of have have both sides uh, work their way up together so it's not yep. just a, a fully bi-loaded situation. Let the weaker side uh, dictate the weight, by the way. So don't lift more weight just because you're stronger on your other shoulder. Do exactly what you do on the weaker side on your stronger side. Otherwise, you'll maintain an imbalance if you yep. continue to lift different weights. So just let me let me make sure I'm hearing you guys correctly then. So then the, the prescription here is we're going to send you MAPS Prime Pro do the shoulder work in there like as much as you can really because it's just you, i would do it several times a day yeah, yeah multiple times a day if you can so that it go follow what it says for shoulder in there and then uh progress into symmetry mm -hmm. uh when you run symmetry we're going to use kettlebells where you want to incorporate bands yeah, i wish because in band in maps bands we have uh, band distractions which is kind of what i'm alluding to in terms of like adding you know resistance to your mobility moves um and do you have bands yeah, I have bands. Okay, so then oh, why, why don't we why don't we give him bands and then specifically take the band distractions and and, yes. and implement that? There you go. So it's it, it's basically like our frequency builder days, like in between. So you would be doing that full uh, session there to kind of work your way back uh, with bands resistance. Yeah, but, but but think of it this way, Joe. Um, if you if you were to learn how to walk, and let's say you started learning how to walk, okay, and you had to really focus on your technique because you're learning how to walk. If someone told you to run real fast and you tried, you might be able to move faster, but your technique would go out the window because now you're trying to do it with speed and intensity. Okay. Because of what you, because of your shoulder procedure, you have to go light, slow, and really, really focus on developing new recruitment patterns and, and recruitment patterns that work for you. If you push intensity and speed, too, too soon, you will be able to lift more weight and you will be able to move faster, but your body's not going to go and, and the, develop. The momentum's going to mask, you know, some, some of those disconnects. Yeah. Right? So we want to reconnect the entire uh, way through. And that's why bands are great for that because, you know, there's no uh, sort of getting around the fact that you're going to have resistance in every portion of that rep. A, a way for you to, to measure or know if you're on the right track to what they're saying is... Prime Pro, the real goal of what we just gave you and everything we said is to be is to get perfect at those shoulder movements. 
So w mm -hmm. when you in the video in the video demos, you're going to see Justin doing a, a bunch of the moves. I think you're doing most of the moves in there, right? Yeah, in Prime yeah. Pro, yeah, usually. So Justin's doing most of the moves in there. Is to you want to get to a place uh, with your shoulder to be able to perform the movements as well as he can. That's more of a priority than loading and going heavier with your kettlebells. So make that the priority is getting really good at that, intensifying that workout more than trying to intensify the weight training workout. Yeah, one last thing. in in uh, The shoulders are complex joint. It's not just the shoulder. It's also the scapula that has to learn um, and, and develop recruitment patterns that are now going to be favorable considering your slightly altered structure. In Prime Pro, there's scapular movements and shoulder movements. Do them both. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, scapular yeah, circles. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, but this surgery was four years ago. Since then, I've been doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I actually got my blue belt and I won competitions. But still, my shoulder is, is just yeah. weaker. And yeah. I've been trying to work through it. Listen, I'm, like not tell I'm not telling you rehab stuff. Yeah. I'm telling you how to get your shoulder to stop hurting. Yep. So mm -hmm. you've gotten stronger... You're yep. definitely stronger, but it hurts. Bro, when you go through Prime Pro, if you do Prime Pro correctly, you'll be sweating from the movements. Yeah. So it's not like this, like, you know, sit back and straight lace like yoga shit. Like it's your it's gonna be intense. And that's that's where your intensity should be in there. That's where you are really trying to create this greater range of motion, better control in the shoulder complex area. That's what you want to be. And yeah. it's not like Sal saying, it's not like some you know, cheesy little rehab thing that you're doing. No, that you if, could, you, if you're move, if you're hurting, that means your recruitment pattern is not ideal, and you've gotten strong yeah. in this not great recruitment pattern. So if you push the weight, you're going to just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, that's yeah. why we got to back down and you're going to reinforce the dis dysfunction. You have to learn a new recruitment pattern. You have to learn it, and it takes a little bit of time, and it takes practice. Um, but if you push the weight, you're going to default. Yeah. to what you're stronger at. And right now you're stronger at a recruitment pattern that's causing pain. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I also noticed my, it has kind of been like this, maybe from eyes, okay, that my one shoulder, I think my left one is lower than my right shoulder. Sure. Uh, that could be also because of, and actually doctor told me that I should have surgery on the right shoulder actually as well because I'm, I'm missing. Listen, yeah, oh, that listen, usually happens because be of careful, the compensations. Yeah, be careful with, with uh, yeah. you know, when somebody has a hammer, <laughs> and you ask them, you know, to put a screw in because they're going to tell you to hammer the screw in. So, yeah, yeah I'm not going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah, going they, there anymore. Yeah, Le okay. le learning new recruitment patterns when you've already strengthened a bad, an old, uh, you know, uh, one that's not ideal and it's strong, takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes time. So give yourself a year of focus, and then you'll get strong. You'll surpass where you are now, and you'll have no pain or far less pain. Mm. Okay, a year. It All right, that's something. It takes a while. It takes a while, but you've 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 developed this recruitment pattern now for the last what three four years. Yeah. it's it's actually been getting better as I was getting stronger. I had to push through a little bit, um, but yes, it's it's been um, four years since surgery, and it's been hurting less, but it's still hurting. It's it's not that yeah. much easier. Well, it might take less than a year in that case, but it's going to take some time is my point. And yeah, and it and it will, it'll get progressively better. It won't be like you don't see anything for a year. It's like you don't you don't so but what Sal's saying is be patient. Be yeah. patient. Mm -hmm. This is not like an overnight thing. It's and the the stuff in Prime Pro, you know, I can't stress enough that you're it's far more valuable to frequently do it throughout the day and yeah. every day every day than it is to do a one hard session or two hard sessions a week which is what a lot of people tend to do is they approach mobility uh stuff like a bodybuilding well, like beautiful thing is it's intense but you can repeat it constantly because you can recover yeah pretty quickly from it so it's not like every day it's doing do damage what it's doing it's just reinforcing that better uh recruitment patterns so now you know your, your function and your strength is all going to be uh more stabilized because you 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 have experience too you're athletic you have a background here you're going to notice that you, there's like a you know wall circles and there's a handcuff with rotation there's these all these different movements you're going to find one or two of them that you feel really good from it after it like you're going to do it and you're going to be like oh wow that that does feel like it's working and helping when when that light bulb goes off for you you do that all the time then. 
Like make that be the like. Let's say it's the wall circle, and you're like, oh shit, when I do that, yeah, five times a day. That that really, I can feel that helps me out. And now when I move, I can feel that the pain's decreasing. Like that's your signal. Like oh, that's really improving mm -hmm. what you need. And do it all the time. Don't just do it mm -hmm. once in, every couple of days. Do it four or five times a day for just a minute or two. Like literally every time you get next to a wall, yeah. you got a few minutes right before do, your threshold. Do you it. Know, hold it. Squeeze into it. Connect with it. Back off. And you just keep that pattern going and going and going until eventually it's no more all right all right all right joseph thanks Good. so we'll send those to you thank you guys i have uh, another question it's a bit sensitive but if you don't mind i'll, I'll sal is very sensitive so go ahead <laughs> he's yeah, yeah i'm not to him. <laughs> don't, okay. don't hurt my feelings um <laughs> so there is a lot of int i mean not much information else. how do you so in my in my family it's been genetically problems with hemorrhoids and i find very hard to work out especially to push harder uh, with that kind of issue, because if I weight lift, it creates pressure. It can it create internal pressure, and then it flares up hemorrhoids. And it's not enough information out there to figure out how to work out around that, or just give it a rest and, and wait. I don't know. Do you have anything there? Yeah. Well, okay. So the experience I have with this is when I would train postpartum uh, women. So hemorrhoids was very common. In women who just had a baby, super common. I think like seventy percent of is women. Is it really that high? Yeah. yeah. It's wow. Really high. Yeah, it's pretty. High. I mean, you're pushing a baby out. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't realize it was that high. Though. Yeah, and then they would hire me, and um, I would do strength training with them, and of course, this would oftentimes uh, become an issue. So, number one, the 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 number one factor that helped was modifying their diet. Um, uh, lots of uh, fluid and a high fiber diet without really preventing any kind of straining or constipation. So they would eat well-cooked vegetables. They would add psyllium. Psyllium husk is a really, really good supplement for them. So they would start the morning off with a serving, like a tablespoon of psyllium husk with two glasses of water. You have to have a lot of water with psyllium. Otherwise it actually acts in the opposite, okay? So mm -hmm. that, that made the biggest difference. Then when we would work out, I would have them, and this is the thing with this, uh, as it gets better, you can start to train with higher intensity, but in the beginning, you have to learn to breathe and relax the body and focus on the target area. So this is not an ideal way to lift heavy, right? When you're lifting heavy, you want to activate everything and you want, oh, you want to strain and struggle. But with something like this, I would have them while they're doing it. Try to keep the face relaxed. You can brace the core, but don't create lots of uh, internal pressure in the core. This is the opposite of what I would tell somebody when they're doing a heavy PR. Okay, so heavy PRs are probably out of the question. So they would breathe out, relax the face, focus on the target muscle, and that usually would 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 create less pressure uh, on the area that would that they would you know they would feel it negatively otherwise. But the 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 fiber, well cooked vegetables, the psyllium husk, lots of fluid that made the biggest impact. Okay, all right, I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks for calling in, Thank Joe. All right, man. Thank you, Adam. So Justin, appreciate you. Got it. You guys. Yeah, Thank you, man. Keep you going. Remember when I helped you with that, Justin? When you had I, yeah, <laughs> you're real hands on with that. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I, I tell you, I tell you, um, with the recruit, this is the analogy I've given before on the show. And I think it's the best analogy to help people understand what I mean by what we talk about when we say um, recruitment patterns. If you typed on a keyboard with your index fingers for, for three years <laughs> mm -hmm. and you got real fast with it, because yeah. you can get kind of fast, right? With two fingers. You end up looking like a squirrel. Yeah, but you're just doing this, you know, all the time. And then someone comes along and says, hey, you know, if you do it with all your fingers in this particular way, you can be a lot faster. Well, initially you're not. Yeah, no. you're going to suck for Initially you're slower that yeah. way. And yeah. then if you tell someone to go as fast as they can with this new method, they're going to be like, screw that. I'm going to go back to my old method uh -huh. because you're telling me to go fast. But eventually through slow practice and learning this new pattern, you surpass what you could do before. This is what this is exactly what happens with the recruitment patterns. If you push yourself too hard, your body goes back to what it's good at, and well, it will avoid trying to learn this new pattern. Everything he's talking about is just somebody that just drives full intensity, full blast. I can guarantee it. You yeah, know, and every that, and that's well, what's an such a hard. It's a such a hard switch to. Uh, that's why he didn't like what I said. It's gonna take. No, he didn't like any of that. what we had to say. <laughs> like, let's be honest, and that's fine. You know, and it's it, but we're not gonna change. <laughs> you know, the prescription. It, it is gonna help and gonna benefit, and and you know, it's just sometimes you just have to step out and be like, I need to 
to take care of this, I have to like take care of my body and I have to allow this to, you know, fully recover. I have to retrain it. I have to relearn uh, how to use, you know, my shoulder uh, adequately. And that takes time. Maybe one of the hardest people to help virtually that we've had yet. I mean, just really tough to communicate without it's a seeing, tough one to articulate. Yeah, without seeing that person move and then be able to put them in a more advantageous position yep. and, then, and then say, "Feel that? Yeah. Right. That's what I need you to." to yep. You know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna real be all hard, feel and slow. Yeah, and real control. hard for us to communicate that with such a unique surgery and all the potential ways that he could be moving well or not well. Right. And then you add in the hemorrhoids on top of that. And then like <laughs> addressing that. I mean, that was a, that, that's a, that's a tough. I mean, I felt like the advice was really good. I just hope that I tell you, if you I, didn't trust, have, I hope it resonates a little, I yeah. mean, if, if anything, and if I didn't have experience training, I trained a lot of postpartum women, women, that was, that was 100% a common thing yeah. with them. That's the only reason why I know, you know, what to do there. Cause I would work with their doctors. Yeah. So I hope, I hope that he sticks with the trust of process and then also stays in touch with us. Cause that is, a tough one to try and to to mend virtually totally look if you like mind pump if you like our show you want good fitness information but you want it to be filtered through us because let's be frank the fitness industry lies all the time well check this out go to askmindpump.com ask any question and our new ai model will answer your question based off of our episode so it's our voice telling you our advice askmindpump.com 